Lord God, we want you to have your way, Lord God. Majestic ruler, soon coming to Lord God, Lord God, have your way, Lord God. Oh, oh. 
slaves to our ancestors through the prophets. But now, in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son, he created the universe. The Son radiates God's own glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. This shows that the Son is far greater than the angels, just as the name God gave him is greater than their names. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we worship God this morning? Can we worship the one who was created? The one who is the creator? By him, everything that was made and everything is held in place. Without him, nothing is made that was made. And the one that died for our sins, the Bible says that he was the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth. And that's why we can say hallelujah. That's why we can worship his name. That's why we can lift our voices. That's why we can put our hands up and shout with praise. Because Jesus is the name that is above every name. Hallelujah, God. You will now have prayer from our brother AJ, followed by welcome and hugs of love from Mr. T. eternally, Lord Father. For if you are for us, there is nothing here nor there that can be against us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful atmosphere you set in this place, Lord Jesus. For the wonderful loves that you show us, Lord, day in and day out, Lord God. We thank you for, to, for us to be allowed to worship you and to say your name, to stomp our feet, to clap our hands, Lord Jesus. And if we can do neither one of Lord, we will choose one, and we'll put our emphasis there to praise you, Lord, with everything that we have within us, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for being you, Lord God. We thank you for being eternal, Lord. We thank you for cleaning up the mess, Lord, that we have made for ourselves, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for just doing it day in and day out, Father. Hallelujah, Lord. We pray that you be in the midst of this service, Lord. We pray that that, that miraculous things invoke whenever your people come together, Lord Jesus, Lord. And we will call on your name. We will worship you together on one accord, Lord. We will pray for those who are on their way. We will pray for those who are here to worship you now, Lord Father. We just, we just pray, Lord, and we ask so that we, we make this entire day a success and a success in you, Lord Jesus. Because you are great, you are holy, Lord. You are flawless, you are perfect in everything you do, Lord Jesus. And we strive to become that every day in every step of our lives, Lord Jesus. To become closer to you, Lord. Lord, we just pray that you just touch on each and every one of us, Lord. Make the connection personal. Personal, Lord, through the through the through the sermon, make the connection personal. The only way that you can and touch every individual in the way that they need to be touched, Lord Father. I pray for healing, Lord, for mental healing, Lord, for physical healing, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that that people who come here they will feel love, Lord. They will feel love, Lord. They, that atmosphere will surround them, Lord. And, and if their tears need to be shed, Lord, we pray that they're those tears are tears of joy, Lord. Tears that we cry to you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just pray, Lord, that you just be with us, Lord, with everything that we do on today and every day, Lord. We pray all these things in your precious name, Lord. Father, we thank you in advance.
Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is so great to be here this morning. It's a little risky, but it's good to be here. And I'm here to welcome you on behalf of our overseer Shannon, our Pastor Carolyn Scott, Pastor Dee Brown, and Elder Barrington Brown. And we are so glad that you guys are here. We want you to hug and love on your neighbor. And then we'll be back.
You got the two pop ones, right? Pop-Up Fellowship 
this Tuesday, November 5th at 7 p.m., uh, we will be meeting at the AMC Hamilton 24, where we will be watching the movie Harriet. Uh, if you haven't seen the trailers, Harriet is the story of Harriet Tubman. Does anybody remember that um, that slave show with Juicy yes. Smollett? Yes! Underground. They had the best. I was. When they had this, this, the, the show on Harry Tubman, she's talking about, like, I'm like, somebody should make a movie. Well, beloved, they did. And so, <laughs> beloved. So we will be uh, November 5th at 7 p.m. That's this Tuesday. We'll meet at the AMC 24 in Hamilton, and we'll be watching Harry. So all those who are interested in attending um, can come out. Um, just... Just a reminder, if they, if they do want to participate in Gregory, they can see Deacon's Run. And if anybody knows like how they want to participate already in the Christmas um, gathering, they can see Deacon, uh, Deacon um, John Dre. Thank you. Oh. John Dre. Deacon John Dre. I'm out. <laughs> when I find out about One final announcement. Um, this is personal. My, my family is back. So, <laughs> no more adoption services is needed. They are back, but they came back uh, that yesterday afternoon. So, Shannon is resting, but she wants to tell everybody hello and she loves everybody. This is also my last um, Sunday as many be. So, Saturday at 9 a.m. Uh, Saturday at 10 a.m., we will be meeting at Shekinah Glory uh, Christian Church in New York, New Jersey, where um, the ordinance, myself, De Deacon Elect, Deacon Elect Edwin, I uh, will be ordained as elder. Deacon along with other yeah. elders. Yeah. Since I'm presiding today, I just want to take the liberty and say thank you all. This is not an elder is an elder in a vacuum. So I'm going through like my word, my U version word Bible, reading the chronological Bible, and I'm at the epistles where the elder scriptures are. That was this, that was this morning scriptures. I was like, oh shoot, that was highlighted. I got that. But uh, it really it emphasizes that an elder and a deacon are not in a vacuum, but they serve a community. So thank you for allowing us to serve your community. Thank you, pastors. For, for growing us up and, and, and really supporting us and encouraging us and stretching us and kicking us when we need to be kicked and loving us when we need to be loved. I really do appreciate all of you, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just one last reminder, this is our, this is the first Sunday of our impact session. It was amazing. Who, who attended the impact session? A show of hands, please, how was it? Great. It was awesome, session one, please come back. We have a phenomenal pastor, you already know. Uh, <laughs> we have a phenomenal overseer, and she's doing excellent work in our impact session. So next Sunday and the following Sunday at 8.30 a.m., we will be here talking about deliverance. Deliverance. So please join us. If you miss session one, that's okay. Uh, if somebody has notes, like they can give it to you. We will not be streaming, however. So if you need it, you need to come get it. Right? Yeah. Like those old school record commercials. Can I borrow my brother? No, my brother. You must get your own. So, so if you need it, come get it at 8.30. Amen. And there's one more announcement. So um, I'm just going to elaborate on the ordination. Um, as you all know, we probably do this maybe once every two years. Um, but I want everyone to be fully aware that when we go to Shekinah, it is a sacred ordination. It's what something that we call a high holy service. And so all of the people who are ordained will be fully vested. Pastor Shannon, Overseer Shannon, she is partially vested, right? Partial, <laughs> partial vestments. But um, as we have done in the past for um, Resurrection Sunday, 
where we wear multiple layers of, of uh, clothing, clergy attire. Um, I just want everyone to know that when you go, probably half of the people in there will be fully rested. Um, and so I want you, when you come, to know that because it's a high holy service, it's a sacred ordination, that we make sure that our attire is fitting for that service. Amen? Okay? So I want us, before we go, let's make sure that we are fully covered. Amen? Um, that things are not too tight. Things are not too short. Things are not too loose falling off of us. Right? We want to respect and have reverence for what God is going to do in that service. And we don't want any distractions. Amen? So I just want us to be aware that when you go, it's going to look high holy. And there's probably some things that you may not be used to. Uh, but please know that we will be there. If you have any questions, we can help answer any of those questions that you may have. Um, I don't want to keep you from coming, but I also don't want you to feel out of place either. Right? All right. So I look forward to seeing all of you there. If you have any further questions, you can ask me. Amen. Amen. Now we will be in the hands of our phenomenal worship team. Amen. Our phenomenal, phenomenal. Amen. Yeah. Phenomenal worship team. Come oh, down. Praise God. Yes,
fights till I'm found. Hallelujah. Leaves the 99. I don't deserve it. Hallelujah. I couldn't earn it. Still, he gives it love, his love away. Hallelujah. Oh, the overwhelming, all-consuming, reckless love of God. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor the Lord. Amen. For his presence here with us in this place. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. I thank God for each and every one of you. As our, our kids were in worship today, I just looked up and realized, like, how big? I don't know if the, the summer growth work just kicked in or I just, maybe it's because I got on flat shoes, but they look extra, <laughs> extra heighty today. Amen. But I thank God. Can we give God praise for our children? We love you all, and we're so proud of your service to the Lord. Amen. And I'm looking at them and seeing the ways that they are growing and the ways that they are maturing physically, emotionally. Amen. Some of them. I used to just have to smile at night because I had no idea what they were saying. And we can actually hold conversations now. Amen. <laughs> thank God for all the ways that he's working and growing us. Amen. And thank God for those who are working with our children and our children's ministry. Amen. Can we give God a hand of praise for them? church, and we want you to be there to participate. Amen. So we want to encourage her. She said, if you have questions, please see her. Um, but if you can really see anybody in leadership, although she takes a point for ordination for us, um, but we want you to be there to be of support as our deacon designate becomes deacon Edwin Walker, and our elder yep. designate becomes elder Patrick Williams, amen. We are so excited about what God has done and how they have submitted themselves to a process. Amen. Folks can just pop up calling themselves something. Amen. We were having a conversation last night about vegan leather. Back in the day, we just called it pleasure. Vegan leather. Mm. Mm. Um, which is, you know, that was how we said something was fake leather. Amen. We think that we don't, we don't have vegan elder and vegan <laughs> deacon. Amen. <laughs> Even though such exists. They are, they have been authentically processed and authentically approved and authentically certified and being authentically, authentically ordained. So we don't have to come up with another name, amen, to cover in authenticity, amen. I'm into the multisyllabic words today, apparently. Um, amen. But they, we can, we can say that they are who they are because they are genuine and they have gone through a genuine process. And we thank God for that. You can go forward with confidence when you know that you've been through a genuine process. It's harder and it takes longer, but you can stand in places confidently knowing that people have stretched you and poured into you and poured oil on you and beat defects out of you. Hallelujah. So that you can stand confidently that you are genuine and certified. And so we thank Amen. God for them going through the process. Amen? Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 19. Amen. Luke chapter 19. We won't be before you long today. Um, to 
we still have our communion. Amen. Chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. The scripture says, Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the towns. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name, Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor Lord. And if I cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Yes. I'm going to talk about the sinner and the truth. And the tree of me having seats, children, you may be dismissed. Amen. It may be me, so if you have any difference, let me know. A sinner and a tree. to Jesus but found that people were in the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't working with a lot of time. <laughs> Have you ever been in the way? Back of a person that needed to get to Jesus. Well, I think the first question is more comfortable than the second. More comfortable for us to think about ourselves as people who need to get to Jesus, but for whom there are people in the way, than it is for us to think about ourselves as people that are in the way of others who need to get to Jesus. Zacchaeus is one such man. He needs to get to Jesus. And according to the scripture, there are people who are in the way physically, but they're also in the way psychologically. They're in the way because they know Zacchaeus in one way and have decided to hold him hostage to the one thing that they know about him. You see, Zacchaeus is, as the Bible says, a chief tax collector. What it means is that he is a Jew who works for the man. Right. Yeah. He works for the Roman government collecting taxes from his Jewish sisters and brothers. Right. And as if it is not bad enough to have to pay taxes, Zacchaeus, as a chief tax collector, pads individual household tax bills to make sure that by the time his staff get their cut and he gets his cut, they can still pass along the appropriate level of taxes to the government. In other words, Zacchaeus has become wealthy by robbing his own people. Zacchaeus 
chief tax collector in the region who had become very rich. Somehow, Zacchaeus has heard something about Jesus. The Bible says he tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. Have you ever tried to get closer to Jesus? And the closer you tried to get to him, the more you became aware of your own shortness. Ah. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Only those of us with good sense and a sound understanding of who we are with respect to God will understand that. We, we understand that the closer we try to get to him, the more aware of how unworthy we are. The closer we try to get to him, the more aware of how sinful we are. The closer we try to get to Jesus, the more we are aware that we really don't deserve to be there at all. Lord have mercy, Jesus. He's trying to get to Jesus. But the Bible says he is too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead of the crowd and climbed up a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. This is where my Bible geek, like Minister Patrick's Bible geek, began to kick in. Because I got curious about the life of a sycamore fig tree. I get curious about things like that. And when I got curious about it, I did a little research and I found out that a sycamore tree begins to bear their seeds six or seven years after they are planted. However, their seed bearing is not optimal until they are in their 50th to 200th year. That's when they're bearing their, somebody say, good seed. Good seed. In year 50 to 100. Lord have mercy. Sycamore trees are also fast growing trees, meaning that if they have sufficient moisture when they're young, they have the potential to grow two feet or more annually. So I got kind of into this mentally, and I was thinking about this tree that Zacchaeus was climbed up into. So in other words, a tree was planted somewhere. And about 50 years after that tree was planted, that tree bore optimum seed. And one of those seeds was sent by one specific wind to land on one specific side of this specific road. And a specific amount of rain fell on that specific seed on that specific side of that specific road, such that about 25 years later, that seed on that side of the road grew into that mature tree into which Zacchaeus climbed in order to see Jesus. Lord have mercy. I got excited about that. Why did you get excited about that? Because God made provision for Zacchaeus through a seed, through a wind, through a road, through dirt, through rain. God made provision for this exact moment of transformation in Zacchaeus' life a hundred years before Zacchaeus even got to the moment. Lord have mercy, Jesus. What I want you to understand is that whatever the obstacle is that you are facing right now in your life, God is not trying to figure out in this moment how he is going to get you over this obstacle. He's not trying to figure out in this moment how he's going to carry you over this hurdle. Before you even knew it was a hurdle, before you even got to it, before you were even born, before your mother even met your father, God has already made provision for this thing. Every single obstacle in your life is my, and mine is an opportunity to climb into the provision of God. Yes. Something is in his way. And he doesn't know that the one 
that he's trying to get to has already put a tree in place so that he can overcome his obstacle. So Zacchaeus runs ahead and climbs into a tree. Can you imagine that? With his short little legs. Say, oh, there's a tree. Y'all know we would say, luckily there was a tree there. Not luckily. Divinely, there's a tree. what's important about him climbing into the tree is not that he sees Jesus but that Jesus sees him. Yeah. That's good. Jesus locks eyes with that notorious sinner. Thief. Hustler. Cheater. Deceiver. Betrayer. It's one thing when other folks betray you, but when your own folks betray you, come on. Yeah. Hated by the community. Somebody saw him, they were wondering what he was doing there. Jesus locks eyes with Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus, come down from there. I'm coming to have dinner at your house. If you and I were in the crowd, it's likely that Zacchaeus has stolen money from us. It's likely that when we sat down to calculate our bills, y'all know how we do, we figure out how much we're going to have left over to put there and tuck there and sit there, and we worked all that out. Zacchaeus or somebody on his staff came knocking and handed us a tax bill which blew up our whole plan. Okay, you, you never figured out your finances and then you got a bill that messed up your whole situation? Now put a face on that person. What you want to do with that face? You probably don't want to kiss it, right? If we're in the crowd, we have been wronged by Zacchaeus. And we might get excited when we hear Jesus call Zacchaeus' name. Yep, yep. Because we want yep, yep. Jesus yep, yep. to have words <laughs> with Zacchaeus. Jesus. See, I knew he was the Messiah. <laughs> robbing us all this time taking advantage of us all this time trying for myself Jesus about to get up we want Jesus to have something to say to Zacchaeus but what we want is Jesus to take Zacchaeus to the court or to the city gates? Because the court and the city gates are where you hold people accountable. That's where people bring up charges and the elders decide that you're innocent or that you're guilty. But since Zacchaeus robbed the elders too, we know they're going to decide in our favor. We want him to be held accountable for what he has done. We want him to be judged for his wrongdoing. We want him to be punished for making us suffer. So we want Jesus to call on Zacchaeus, but the problem is that Jesus does not call Zacchaeus out to the court. Jesus does not call Zacchaeus out to the, to the, to the gate of the city. Jesus calls Zacchaeus and says, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. Hold on, hold on. He said, he, I know good and well. He did not say, do you know he took my retirement money? I know good and well. Jesus did not just tell Zach. 
to come that he was coming to his house. We don't understand why Jesus would have Zacchaeus at his house because the court and the gate is the place for accountability and judgment and punishment. But the house means fellowship. The house means welcome. The house means acceptance. The house means love. So I can't understand why in the world Jesus would invite himself to Zacchaeus's Now if I'm in the crowd, I got a problem with Jesus. Maybe I feel like I need to correct Jesus' perspective of Zacchaeus. But if I'm Zacchaeus, I'm grateful that Jesus still makes house calls. Yes. Yes. How is it that we so easily forget? the grace wherewith Christ has rescued us. How is it that we so easily forget that it was God that brought me out of hell and God that brought hell out of me? But we want the Zacchaeuses in our lives to get the condemnation that Christ delivered us from. I'm glad Jesus still makes house calls. Sorry. So watch this. Jesus says to Zacchaeus, tonight I'm going to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus with his little self climbs down from the tree. The people are talking. Look at somebody and say, let them talk. 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 Because listen, whether you're doing well or not, people want to talk. Folk want to talk because you're progressing. They're going to talk because you're digressing. Listen, they're going to they, they talk because you're growing. They're going to talk because you're diminishing. They're going to talk because you're cutting. They're going to talk because you grew it long. they want to talk. Come on. They're going to talk because y'all broke up. They're going to talk because y'all back there. Let the people talk. Come on. Let the people talk. And I'm wondering if, as they're talking, they're thinking that they could change people like Zacchaeus by shaming them, by embarrassing them, by ignoring them, by excluding them, by slandering them. Which is why they find Jesus' approach so disruptive because Jesus doesn't do any of those things. Jesus decides rather to love him, to bless him, to encourage him, to include him. I wonder if in their talking they're trying to figure out how is it that Jesus who has healed the sick, how is it that this one who demonstrates such power and is so clearly used by God can look at a man like this and see something redeemable. But God had already said it. God had already mentioned it. He already said it through the prophet Jeremiah. He said, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love, with an unfailing love. I have drawn you to myself. He's talking to a people who have rebelled against him. He's talking to a people who have rejected him. He said, I still loved you. He's talking to a people who have turned their back on him. He says, I'm still drawing you. People who are running from him, he says, I'm chasing after you, even as you're, even as you're running from me. I loved you, my people, with an everlasting love, with an unfailing love. I have drawn you to myself. I wonder if anybody other than Zacchaeus and me fell in love with Jesus when you realized that he could have killed you, but instead he drew you.
People have been criticizing him. He wasn't changing. Talking about him, but he wasn't changing. Rejecting him, but he wasn't changing. And one man says, and Zacchaeus starts changing. Zacchaeus says, I'm going to give half of everything I own to the poor. Because Jesus is. And he says, on top of that, if I've taken anything, he, he was <laughs> he was playing a little bit right there, like, Zach, you playing. Everybody. If! <laughs> bit by bit. Watch this what he says. If I've taken anything, he said, I'll give them back. Four times yes. what I took. And at first glance, that's like, oh, that's cute. I mean, unless you're about to get one of them refund checks. Then you're like, ah, oh, Lord, deal with Zacchaeus. Thank you for saving Zacchaeus. You were taking him a minute ago, but now you're like, <laughs> but look, I'll give him four times. What I took. Come on back. That's random, Zacchaeus. That's arbitrary. Except that it's not. Because the truth is that the law of Moses makes provision for restitution. When you take something that's not yours, the law of Moses makes provision for how you're supposed to make it right. And it wasn't just to say, we sorry this way if we ever had it. But it wasn't just to say, I'm sorry. The fruit of Zacchaeus' repentance was the result of a seed that had already been sown. That's good. That's good. In other words, there was already something at work in him, even though the people couldn't see. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Oh, that's good. I know y'all want to argue on Facebook about Kanye, but there was already <laughs> something at work in him before it was apparent to people.
So it's that front teeth situation. That you are really sorry and not just sorry, but repentant. Yeah, that's good. And he needed somebody to say, okay, Zach, yes, do that. He had probably been hanging out with people that were like, man, you 
plan. You know good well you ain't about to give that up. You is not about to do that. We already know. You funny though, you funny. been provided for you. God knew that you and I would desperately need him, but we would come up short. He knew that we would need him, but we wouldn't be able to get to him. That something would be in the way. He knew that people would be in the way, or our past would be in the way, or our proclivities. Come on, come on, somebody. Proclivities is another word for sin. Our proclivities would be in the way. But I heard a hymn writer that said, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that cross. How is it that you can love an emblem of suffering and you can love an emblem of shame? I love that old cross where the dearest and the best for a world of lost sinners was slain. So I cherish the old rugged cross. Why do I cherish the old rugged cross? Because I realized that when there were so many things between me and God, God provided a tree for me to climb up on in order to get to him. So I cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to him, right? It said, to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Yes, 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 yes. The hope not just of Zacchaeus, but every sin is the truth. Yeah. That God has made provision before you got here yes. for you to get out of here. Yes. I'm trying to help somebody that feels stuck. God made provision before you got here to get out of here. I'm trying to help somebody that feels like you've just been in it so long. God made provision before you got here to get out of here. I'm trying to help somebody who has started to think that maybe it's just going to be like this always and I just have to learn how to live in this reality. God made provision before you got here for you to get out of here. And the reality is that not only are you looking for Jesus, but Jesus is looking for you. And if you're having a hard time getting to him, all you have to do is cry up into what he has already provided. God has made provision for you. I don't care what everybody else is saying. I don't care who else has given up on you. I don't care who else doesn't want to be bothered with you anymore because they know how you are. You know how you are. And God knows how you are. And he made provision for you anyway. Yeah. I'm grateful to God today that he has made provision before we got here to get us there is no temptation among you that's uncommon. Does that mean God ain't 
ain't shocked. People may have more ways to express evil, but God ain't shocked. What does it say? Say, and with every temptation, he provides a way of escape. That means it is the intention of God that I don't stay stuck in where I've been. That I don't stay stuck in who I've been. That I don't stay stuck in what I've been. And I've learned this over, I don't even know at this point, 20 something years? Oh, 30 years. My Lord. Walking with the Lord. That God uses every tight place as an invitation for us to climb into his provision. Every single, there's never a tight place that we're in that God says, you got to handle this one on your own. That's not what he does. He says, climb into what I've provided. Climb your financial problems, climb into what I've provided. Spiritual bondage, climb into what I've provided. Mental distress, climb into what I've provided. Because before you got to it, I made a way for you to get out of it. And so as we prepare to come to this communion table today, we do so thankful that he made a way. The way is already made. Can I tell you that some of us are just in paralysis of analysis. We're trying to figure out, like, how is it going to work? Like, could you imagine Zacchaeus, Jesus is passing by, and the crowd is there, and Zacchaeus is there, and he can't get to Jesus, and he sees a tree, and rather than just jumping in the tree, he stands there thinking, hmm, I wonder about this tree. I wonder how old this tree is. If its branches are really strong enough. You see, I weigh about, he was short for me, like 150. I wonder which of these branches can hold 150 pounds. Hmm, I don't know. I don't have much experience with climbing trees. Actually, I climbed a tree one time when I was little, and that didn't work out so well. I fell, and I would have hurt myself badly. Huh. I wonder who owns this tree. Who planted this tree? Would anybody mind me climbing in this tree? What's happening while, G while Zacchaeus is analyzing? Jesus is passing. He's, he's missing his moment. He's missing his moment. Because he wants to understand everything before he takes one step. Lord Jesus. The opportunity is passing him. Because he's afraid to take the leap. I want you to know if you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior. Don't let the opportunity pass you <coughs> because you're afraid to take the leap. Don't wait for all of your questions to be answered before you take the leap. Come on, even when you buy a car, they send you with a big booklet to answer the rest of your questions. I don't know who ever reads the book, but I, you know. Don't miss your opportune time with Jesus because you don't have all the answers. <sighs> don't be so concerned about analyzing that you miss. Can I put it in the framework we understand? You're so focused on reading the bus schedule that the bus passes you by. You still want the bus stop. Don't miss your opportunity moment with Jesus because you don't know it all. The truth is, I've been walking with Jesus for 30 years. Why well, walk with him the less I realize I know? You're not going to know it. You're not going to know it. But you are 
saved by grace, by faith through grace. That's how you are faith it. And as you faith it, you come to understand better and better. So I want to extend an invitation to somebody that's been looking at the tree. It's interesting. It's something compelling. I feel like there's opportunity here. I feel like there's another dimension of life that I've been missing. I've been glancing at it through the window. I'm just not sure is it for me. What will it require? What will I gain? What will I lose? Hmm. Will they really accept me? Will they not? this be like another one of those opportunities where I thought I'd be accepted but I was rejected. I want to encourage you not to let this opportune moment with Jesus pass you by. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ but you want to. You want to get past people. Get past your past. Get past your sin, your proclivities. You know, you have to get past those things and get to Jesus. I want you to know that the provision has been made. If you're here and that's you, just sing a five letter raising your hand. I want to get to Jesus. 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 I'm tired of letting everything stand in the way. I'm tired of letting, making progress only to be pushed back again. I want to get to Jesus for the all this time. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for my sister. I thank you for my brother. The one who feels very much like Zacchaeus. Excluded because of their shortness unable to gain entrance, unable to gain acceptance, unable, Lord. I pray for them now in the name of Jesus. God, give them a deep knowledge that your arm is extended, not just to Zacchaeus, but to them. God, you've made room for them, Lord. Even as your seed has been working in them, you've made room for them, Lord God. Even as what they do may not have caught up to what they know just yet, you've made room for them, Lord God. If they would keep moving in your direction despite the crowd, keep moving in your direction despite the pressure from people who knew what they used to be, keep moving in your direction, Lord. They will find you a guest at their table. I pray for the one that is wrestling. The one that is reeling, Lord. Trying to just catch their breath before making another move. I pray that you would keep chasing them with your love. And when they go to the grocery store this afternoon, they will find your love and I'll set them Lord. Work tomorrow, they find your love at the gas station, your love. When they go home, God, I pray that you would keep chasing them with your love. That you would cause them to know just how serious you are about them. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that we are all sinners in need of a Savior. And you have provided that Savior in Christ Jesus. Now as we come to this table to eat this bread and drink this cup, we do so grateful that whatever we are in, before we got to it, you made a way for us to get out of it. Thank you for the yoke destroyed. Power of the blood of Christ Jesus. Thank you that it is because of the blood that I don't have to be what I've always been. Hallelujah.
as we prepare to come to the Lord's table, we should not do so flippantly. We should examine ourselves before we eat this bread, before we drink this cup. Examine our motives. Examine our hearts. Examine our need for forgiveness. Examine ourselves. Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth because they were coming to the communion table with the wrong motives. They were coming out of a sense of self-importance as opposed to out of a sense of the importance of the cross and the importance of the cross-formed community. He says, so before you eat and before you drink, examine yourselves. You're coming without examining yourselves. It's causing people to be weak, causing people to be sick, causing people to die. So don't just come anyway, but examine yourself. So we take a moment, even now, for examination, inviting the Holy Spirit to turn his searchlight over our souls, to show us the places where our motives have been corrupted, where pride has done damage, where the lust of the flesh has taken us astray, where the lust of the eyes has caused us to move in the wrong direction. Examine us, O oh God. Search us, O oh God, and let us find if there be any wicked ways in us. Yes, God. Find if there be any wicked ways in us, O oh God. Thank you. this bread, we pray for this juice, because it is juice. First communion table. House Peter and Judith. Peter made a bad decision but had a good heart. Judith made a good decision but had a bad heart. Good decision was to follow Jesus after the trail.
1 Corinthians chapter 11. For now this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, I'm reading from the King James Version, that you come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and I partly believe it. But there must also be heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone taketh before the other his own supper. One is hungry, and the other is drunk. What is he saying? He's saying that the act of communion is not just a vertical act, it is also a horizontal act. That it's not just about us and God, it is also about us and our brother and our sister in Christ. Don't you have houses to eat and drink it, or despise you the church of God and shame those who have not? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I receive of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup and he had sucked, saying, This cup is the new covenant of the new testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come.
and we're standing here only because you were and we and we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you made and we're standing here only because you were time and we're standing here only
closing our uh, speaker's offering and deacon Andre closing our tithes and offering. Amen. We are almost at the place where we'll be able to accept cash app gifts. Amen. Accepting the gift is not the issue. Counting for it is the issue. We want to make sure we have things decently in order so that at the end of the year, we're not trying to fix problems that we should have anticipated. That'll preach. Amen. 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 Fix problems that you should have anticipated. Amen. Amen. As we prepare our offerings, amen, you can give by cash or check, check payable to you and Living Way Ministries. Envelopes are located in your front seat pocket. And then you can also give by texting NLWM to 77977. You can give via our website for those who are streaming online, www.nlwm.net. You can give by our app. And soon and very soon, we'll be able to give by Cash App, which is probably going to be the easiest of them all. We have the offerings prepared. If you will please stand as we read our increased confession.
an estate where the whole li li it's literally a home home where the whole mother-in-law they used to call my mother-in-law sweets but if it's a whole other house I don't actually know that that's called a sweet but I just <laughs> with all that they've been going through and all that they've been dealing with in the midst of it all we celebrate with the leaves from those of us Amen. Amen. And amen. 